Love your brain isn't, doesn't make you creative. Love your brain is a little bit of a, of a helper to, to let you get past these worst fears, these worst, these little hesitations about what, what it is that you're doing, what is it you're about to do, and what is it going to mean even to you. And so this series of paintings that, that, that we started working on, these, I didn't know what they were going to be, and I kept going back to this, this, this image that I, I've, I've drawn and painted this type of image over and over really through my whole life. Um, when we reissued the album cover for our very first um, um, Flaming Lips EP back in 1985, I used this skull that has these dentures crudely glued to them, and, and I see this image again of this sort of deformed face. And then I made a poster, uh, you know, after that, it, with this image again, with this great, this crazy grimacing mouth, and, and, and maybe it's even a coincidence that we're called the Flaming Lips. But this first painting of the grimacing crazy face floating down the, the, the river or whatever it is that it appears to be, this, this, this face comes from this, this sort of, I, I sort of call it, it's a horrible experience crossed with a, a, a wonderful experience of, of, one of the one of the times when we were at this old, old shopping mall, the first shopping mall in Oklahoma City. This is probably sometime in the late 60s. Uh, my older brothers and I have, have tried to pinpoint when exactly some of these events would have happened, but you can't really, we can't quite remember, you know, are you, are you, are you six years old or are you eight years old? But we would be going to the shopping mall and our dad would drop us off at the mall probably as early as you could, even before any of the, the shops opened. And he would come back after, after this whole day of shopping, and sometimes he wouldn't, he wouldn't come back till probably 10, 30, or 11 o'clock at night. So it's, you know, it's probably a, you know, it's, a, it's, it's 13, 14 hour days where we're gonna be dropped off. And most of these days, were only around Christmas time. It would be the only time that we would ever go to something as extravagant as the mall. And you have to remember, there's there's six kids. And one of them's me and my my older brothers and my older sister. And there's six of us and our mother. And so the only the people that weren't there was our was our father and our our dog. You know, and and so he would drop us off, and we would have these. I, you know, when you're such a young child, it's Time is already longer than than it than it you, than it is as you as you mature or whatever. We would even sleep on these round resting kiosks that you know are you know, that you're supposed to sit on. Uh, you know, as you're when you get tired of walking in the in the long corridors there. My mother would pile all the presents there, and we'd guard them, and we'd sleep, and we'd get food, and then we'd walk around some more, and and. So, so an insanely, insanely long day, long afternoon, long into the evening. And the, the mall for me when I was a young child was a gigantic place. With, it was like, I see it now and it's a very flat, it's really only one story. It, it, none, of the, none of the department stores had a second floor. I, I realize that now, but back then it looked like a giant cathedral to me as a young child. And, and during the Christmas um, shopping time, um, there'd be so many people in there. And back then everybody smoked cigarettes. And by the midday on a winter's day, the smoke would have be filling up the place and the sun would be coming through the windows on top. It has these, these great rows of windows that lined the whole top of it. And the sun would shoot through. And I remember sitting on these round kiosk and just looking at people all day because we would spend all day there. My mother would bring the food that we ate. So it wasn't like we were running around eating French fries and, and hamburgers all day. She would bring uh, like an apple and a, and a peanut butter sandwich. And the rest of the time we're just running around making best use of our time. Um, but there would be a lot of time where you're kind of, 
you know, it's not exciting. It's boring and then you would sleep on the kiosk and then you'd go shop again. And then maybe you'd get to go have a, a, you know, a Coke down at the TG&Y. And there was a, there was a guy that back then in, in, the, in the corridor giant hallway of the mall, right outside of Dillard's, he was one of these guys that painted landscapes, and he would, he would do it really fast. It, was, it wasn't a very big painting, but he, set up, he had an easel set up, and he had his paints. And he would do a painting in like about 45 minutes. So if, if, if our family was there on one of these days, I could watch this painter. And, you know, it, 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 as much as I was able to stand there and watch him, I, I could watch him do like, you know, three or four paintings a day, the, the whole way that he did it. And I remember smelling the, um, the, the linseed oil, and I loved the way his paints were always so bright. And he just, he would really get to work, and his paintings would just be wet, drippy oil paints. And he would really, he knew what he was doing. He'd do the water, he'd do the sky, he'd do the, the trees, and there'd be a little cabin off to the side with some smoke coming out of it. And I just thought it was fascinating, and I could just watch him all, all day if I wanted to. So I, I think all this, these smells and all these experiences and this, this linseed oil and this painting and this Christmas music and then getting to eat candy and then this giant structure. And then we would have these, these days where a lot of times we're just looking at people and wondering about you know, what, what's happening with these other families and stuff. And we were wandering around the mall and the mall's very crowded or whatever. And we came across this one family and they were, they were a pretty big family. And we just were, you know, kind of amazed and kind of scared and kind of curious. And, and one of the girls, uh, you know, seemed, and I think about it now, she's probably 10 or 11 years old. She turned around we were sort of walking behind, watching them walk in front of us, and she turned around. And her face had, maybe it's a birthmark or some sort of deformity, and she had this crazy, you know, sort of horrifying face. She, her, her, her teeth and her mouth grimaced, um, and her eyes kind of bulged out. And I remember being... Um, being scared and kind of like scared and laughing at the same time and sort of like oh my gosh it's like a it was it, it was as though we saw like a monster and you know we were just little kids and when you're little kids you don't have any idea of, 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 of how you're going to make people feel or, or about feelings or, or about any of that and we saw her and we kept looking at her and I think we probably started to ridicule her and I don't know if she knew but we, we were having some fun at thinking that she's a, a monster and she's in the mall or whatever and since we were there for quite a while I remember sitting there at the at the round resting spot with our mother and when this family came by we were still in, in, in the throes of making fun of this, this, this disfigured face and calling her a monster. And I think by then we were probably um, maybe being a little mean about it. And I remember my mother, this was, the, of all the things that we could ever have done, this was just not acceptable that we would make fun of this, this, uh, this girl. And, and I remember her scolding us. She's never really scolded us that much. I think we were, since we were the youngest of all the, all the kids, you know, we were pretty free to do what we wanted. But she really scolded us about, you can't make fun of uh, people. You can't belittle people and you can't, um, you can't treat them that way. And I remember this being, this was a powerful moment. You know, it was a powerful, like, turnaround of what we thought we were having fun and we it was funny that she was a monster and then suddenly we could tell that it hurts our mother and I think we could tell that she was ashamed and she was embarrassed and this face of this girl I think is just trapped in my mind and so when I'm painting it to me I'm not 
I'm not really painting a monster. I'm not really painting an ugly face. I'm painting this, this great uh, lesson that I think um, hopefully I'll, I'll have it uh, forever. You can love your brain. Cannabis products for creative humans.